So I wanted to make a video about applying learning principles to learn something. Because a lot of my videos are me rambling on about abstract principles or academic research. So I thought it would be fun to learn mental math, which is not something I am particularly good at. How bad am I? You are going to see in a couple of minutes. First, I wanna talk about what my plan is for this whole project. I'm going to dedicate 40 hours to learning mental arithmetic. So this includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of multi-digit numbers. I'm going to be tracking my hours on this spreadsheet here so that you can see how I'm spending my time. And I'm going to be taking regular tests using uh, this test generator, which can make addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems. To learn the techniques of mental math, I'm going to be using a video course which I bought about 10 years ago put out by the teaching company. Now the teacher of this is Arthur T. Benjamin. He's kind of the master of this kind of thing. Now I'm using this course because I had it already, but you can find the same techniques in his book, The Secrets of Mental Math. So where, where does the learning science come in? The first thing is I'm gonna be practicing a lot. The course itself is only six hours of content. So for the rest of that 40 hours, let's see, 40 minus six is 34. For the rest of those 34 hours, I will be practicing. One of the reasons I'm doing this is to emphasize how much practice I think you need to do to get good at something relative to the amount of lecture material that you might have. Practice is where the bulk of the learning takes place. We are trying to follow Robert Bjork's dictum to input less and output more. The practice is going to involve two things. At the end of each lesson, there are practice problems. So I'm going to be going through those in the companion book to the course. And I'm also going to be using the automated test creation tool to be kind of taking tests throughout the process. So I am practicing the thing that I am trying to get better at. And I'm also taking advantage of interleaving because a lot of my practice, not all of it, but a lot of my practice is going to involve mixing up the problem types with each other. So division, multiplication, subtraction, addition, mixing those problem types up together. Another consideration is spacing or spaced practice. I could probably squeeze 40 hours in my spare time over the course of say three weeks. Here, Benjamin vastly overestimates the amount of free time he has. But I'm gonna do it over the course of two to three months. Benjamin did not complete this project in two to three months. Because for me, this is about long-term skill acquisition. I don't just wanna do this and perform for you, and then, you know, six months later, not be able to do anything. This means I should be doing about three to five hours of work a week. Something else that I plan on doing is to go back over practice problems that I have already done earlier in the workbook. After I go through lecture one, I'd probably do some practice problems with lecture one, and then maybe after I'm through lecture five, I'll go back and do uh, lecture one problems again. I'll probably do lecture one problems and lecture two problems over and over again. The reason is that there's a number of papers that suggest that keeping quote unquote learned items around, things that you already learned how to do around, is generally speaking a good idea. And so that is what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's it. Let's see how I do on my first diagnostic test. It's Tuesday, November 15th. Just got out of the shower and I am getting ready to do my first diagnostic test. So let me set the timer. Okay, go. So it's gonna be roughly 3,000. I go less than 3,000, number five. Okay, does this work? Or I just take 81 minus 62, which is, sure, we're gonna go with that. 30, That's it. I'm gonna go check my score and see how well I did. I was on the 13th problem when I ended. 12, correct. Okay, so I got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My total score is nine out of 100. Not very good. Okay, so I got a ways to go. I am going to update you after I've worked on this for about 10 hours, and I'm gonna take another test then to see how it's going. So I'm about 10 hours in, and I'm about to take another diagnostic test, but before I do, I want to give you some thoughts about how it's going so far. You can see here that this is atrocious consistency. I had surgery and there were the holidays and I, I was generally kind of lazy. But you can be quite inconsistent and still learn a lot. It's not all bad. My sessions have been spaced out quite a bit and uh, I still feel like I'm getting better. At this point, I've learned the techniques for all of the basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And you can see how much time that I've spent 
on lecture versus practice. I think this is a pretty good ratio to keep up. I'm gonna ultimately be doing even more practice. Here are some things that I'm noticing about mental math so far. One of the basic skills that increases in almost any problem solving domain involves rapidly recognizing certain features of the problem. There's a variety of techniques to solve these problems and you wanna be able to recognize as fast as you can what the most efficient way of solving the problem will be. Not only is it about correctly matching, say, a technique to a particular kind of question, but also it's about knowing when I need to carry or borrow or otherwise change an intermediate solution or intermediate answer before I get to the final answer. Another thing that I've been soaking up a bit is just general number patterns. And this is gonna sound really stupid and obvious, but things like counting up by seven. The last digits, if you start counting up by sevens, always follow the same pattern in the same way that counting up by anything follows the same pattern. It's seven, 14, 21, 28. And so that's seven, four, one, eight. And the same thing happens if you're starting at 17 and going up by sevens, right? You would start at 17, you go to 24, you go to 31, you go to 38. When you go to learn something new, a lot of what you are learning is learning what is obvious, learning what should be obvious. When you use practice tests to get better at a skill, you need to go back over those tests and figure out what mistakes you made. And as you review those mistakes, it's important to understand what kinds of mistakes you are making and why you are making them. So for instance, a big chunk of the mistakes I make are just not reading the problem correctly. So I am doing a bunch of problems that are mixed up of, of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And sometimes I just add when I should subtract or, you know, I multiply when I should divide. This is why actually I get a lot of simple addition problems and subtraction problems wrong because I just did the wrong operation. So in this next diagnostic and really in the tests going forward, I am going to focus a lot on first recognizing the operation before doing anything else. For the multiplication and division problems, I have a hard time with problems with, with many digits. Part of that is just a function of how well I can handle the numbers at this time. So if you gave me a two by two multiplication problem, I'll probably be okay. If you gave me a three by two multiplication problems, I'm probably just gonna make a mistake somewhere along the line. I expect that this will get better with practice, but there is also an element of this of using more sophisticated strategies to break these problems down into chunks so that I can, I can do them more easily. Occasionally, I find myself making a mistake in application. So I thought I understood a technique or I, I thought I was using a technique correctly and it turned out, hey, I, 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 made it, I was made, making a little mistake in applying the technique. That kind of problem for me at this point is kind of fading away. Now, although I have not been measuring how long it takes me to solve each kind of problem, large multi-digit multiplication problems are the ones that really strain my memory, and it's those that I really want to spend time trying to improve. Now, I could try to game the measure that I'm using with this practice test and say, go over all the easy questions first and then come back to the hard questions. Now, if I was taking a test for a grade or something like that, that would be a reasonable strategy. But here I am trying to use this test to measure improvement over time. So I wanna be consistent about my measurement. So I'm always going to be starting from one and just moving on from there because that's what I did the first time. I've got 10 minutes on the clock and uh, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Okay, let's go and check and see how well I did. Okay, so this time I got 31, last time I got nine. So I've about tripled my score. You can see that in 10 hours, I've only done 10 hours and I've made already a pretty significant improvement. So one adjustment that I'm making over the next 10 hours is to mix things up a little bit more. This is gonna sound kind of weird, but changing where and how you practice can lead to more robust skill development. So I'm gonna be going into different environments, coffee shops, libraries, outdoors, etc., to be practicing these problems. I'm also gonna be doing the problems not just through reading them, but through hearing the problem read to me. So I'm gonna make a recording of myself, reading out the problem, a little bit of space in between, and then 
I will hopefully I'll have enough time to solve the problem. Now, this is a more challenging practice than seeing the digits on a screen or on paper. It's also just another different mode of kind of taking the problem in. I'm gonna stop the video here. If you have any questions about my process or questions about your own learning process, you can put them down in the comments and I'm gonna do a Q&A in the next video, which will also be the exciting conclusion of this project where we get to see actually how well I do in the final, final test. Okay, I'll see you then. Wish me luck.